The Fourth Estate, breaking news. Anti-terror bill subject to review. NBA presents 22 team plan for resuming. 96 more Filipinos abroad contract COVID-19 with your news anchors, Nikki and Carlos, Carlos reporting, reporting live, live. Tololos Tololos Radio. Radio. Worldwide. Worldwide. <laughs> with our news anchors, Nikki and Solrath. Here at the Fourth Estate. Bayang Magiliw, perlas ng silanganan. The Fourth Estate is back. Siempre po, andi to po tayo ngayon. Nito kasama niyo ako si Saul Rock. Siempre ang aking partner tonight. Walang iba. Siempre Sir Nikki Gokuan. How are you doing, sir? Good evening. Happy 122nd Philippine Independence Anniversary. Yes, sabi nga nila, di ba? Happy 12th of June. Happy, happy, happy 12th ng, ano, ng June. So, Sir Nikki, kamusta naman ang ating mga affairs today? Medyo busy tayo ngayon, ah. Uh, very busy. Uh, marami pong functions ang, uh, uh, in celebration of the Philippine Independence Day. And okay. we're very happy that uh, today is a very historical day apart from celebrating uh, the a 122nd uh, Philippine Independence Celebration. We have a very, very special guest uh, tonight uh, who took some time. I know he's very busy. It took some time to be with us. Uh, That's right. So, uh, Siyempre, we gave him, uh, ano eh, we gave him, uh, um, ang anong tawag dito, a platform ng Tala Loves Radio. Siyempre, this is to, to not only serve our to serve our no, our, our community syempre marami rin marami rin tayong mga ano tawag dyan marami rin tayong mga sumusubaybay ka nga not only here in Calgary but all over um, all over that that can connect and can all over the world listen. all over the world yes yeah, yeah, yeah. All, over, all over the world yeah, yeah. and uh, as you all know Solrak uh, Filipinos are all over the world and they follow our program that's right. Nako, napaka ano, napaka this is to me right now, syempre. I am very very excited, ecstatic to be honest. And um, I'm happy that there's a, a couple of honorables na na magjo-join sa atin tonight. Syempre, let's let's bring him out. I think his name um kilalang kilala po siya dito sa Alberta. Syempre, dito na rin sa Canada. He is our premier of Alberta. Honorable Jason Kenny will be joining us tonight. And also Ang uh, ating secretary, um, commission of Philippines overseas, <laughs> Filipino overseas. Um, yes. Ang um, yeah. ang secretary natin si Mr. Francisco Nick Acosta. Nako, ayan. Nick Acosta. Tukayo, tukayo. <laughs> tukayo pa dali. <laughs> May binanggit ko. <laughs> anyways, anyways. Sir Nicky, um, are you excited? Ito, siyempre, ang Alberta, we're, we're now into our phase two, di ba? So, ito, medyo matatanong natin ang ating honorable uh, premier. A um, uh, few questions uh, regarding the, the lifting of the phase two. So, here we are. I think we're moving forward. Alberta is moving forward. Um, we're going to be uh, stronger and, and, and better. Um, and hopefully, um, ito na nga, uh, tulad ng ating flag, eh, lilipad tayo. Yes, uh, the relaunch is definitely uh, a positive move towards uh, the right direction. Obviously, uh, uh, it's a well-thought plan by uh, the Premier and his team. And I'm happy because uh, the relaunch happened exactly on, on June 12, which is, again, the 122nd anniversary of the Philippine independence. That's right. That's right. Nako, ang director kaya natin, eh, ready na ba tayo sa ating, um, sa ating caller? Or, um... We're just awaiting, uh, uh, um, for our guests to join us and, uh, talk about, uh, the relaunch that started today. And obviously, uh, Solrak, uh, we have a lot of questions as to how this is being carried out, right? That's right, that's right. 
And here at Fort State, uh, our our mission is to give you straight facts and deliver you exactly the correct information that you need. That's right. And talagang ano yan eh? Ang ating director talaga siyempre, she wants and we want this to be ano parang kumbaga talagang nanggagaling straight from the to the source di ba ika nga para lang ma-deliver natin sa ating mga listeners all over the world na wag na tayong makinig or manood sa mga sa mga ano tawag dito sa mga fake news ika nga so sir Nikki eto na eto na ready na po tayo ang ating premier of Alberta is joining us tonight here at the Fort State Jason right. Kenny. Sir Nikki, are you ready? Let's welcome. I'm very excited and I'm ready. Honorable Jason Kenny. Sir, how are you doing tonight? Sir, are you there? Hello, hello, how are you? Oh, you doing? Sir, okay. mabuhay po kayo. How are you doing tonight? Mabuhay. I'm sorry, I don't have my uh, barang tonight. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay, sir. That's okay. So happy, happy Philippines Independence Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, and and welcome to our show. Thank you for gracing our show, and thank you for taking the time and giving us some time here at Tala Loves Radio, where um, there is actually a lot of uh, a lot of our Filipinos are watching us and listening to us live right now on our Facebook Live and also on our app. So, sir, say, Jason. Um, we are very excited, and also um, what uh, Sir Nikki was saying earlier, um, we are very, very happy. It's um, anong tawag dito? Um, historical. It's it's historical because not only that you lifted the face to Alberta did, um, and here we are also celebrating our um, Independence Day at the same time. Yes, it's a, you know what? It's a good time to celebrate because we've been through some really tough three months. And I know how many sacrifices people have made um, uh, in the community and the whole province to, um, uh, you know, get through this pandemic. But I, but I really want to say a special word of gratitude to the Pinoys because this is a community that does more than most to, to be, you know, to help the vulnerable. I think of all of the, um, uh, the Filipinas working, for example, helping provide care for the seniors in the home care facilities and, and, and things like that. And they've done an amazing, amazing job, a job of professionalism, compassion. The whole community has shown forth with great uh, dignity. And I think um, it's a wonderful time now that we're, we're past the worst of the pandemic to pause for a moment, uh, to, to uh, congratulate, congratulate each other for the progress we've made, but also especially to celebrate the Philippine spirit here in Alberta on this day. Thank you, sir. We really appreciate that. Sir Nikki, go ahead. Yes. Uh, Premier, um, this is, as we've said, this is very histor historical. It's a very historical day, and uh, we thank you for your beautiful message to the Filipino community. Uh, and uh, that, that beautiful message, uh, in, in that beautiful message you said, uh, you talk about uh, the hardworking uh, frontliners we have, uh, in this pandemic right now, and we appreciate all the efforts that your government has been taking to get us out of this uh, pandemic. Well, thank you, and we've had an amazing team, of professional people, uh, uh, and you know, Alberta was very well prepared. Um, we were ordering big supplies before uh, anyone else, really, in North America, and we had very the highest testing in the world. And we, ex we created 2,000 open hospital beds in case we got overwhelmed in our healthcare system. Um, but here's the key thing. We were able to do this with less restrictive measures than most other places, than all other provinces and most other countries around the world. I know there are many businesses impaired. And for that, I'm so sorry for the people in your community who had to suspend businesses, who, who, who have lost their jobs over the last three months. But I want them to know that thanks to their... Uh, sacrifice and hard work we've been able to avoid the worst we've had one of the lowest levels of infection hospitalizations icu admissions and and deaths of, of, of any major country in, in in the at least in the western world i don't know how things gone back in philippines on all of this how did it how did it go out in philippines well 
it's it's very tough uh, having having a very big population uh, in the Philippines. Uh, it's it's kind of tough. Uh, they're still uh, struggling to contain uh, this pandemic, and we have uh, called on the military for help already. So the government has uh, uh, eased up some uh, restrictions, but we're not out of the woods as as like any other country. Well, you know, we're not either, and people need to continue being careful. But we've been able to open up more than pretty much everywhere in North America or Europe, at least. And um, but we still have to be cautious and all. But, the, you know, I, I wanted to say again, um, you know, in the last 15, 20 years, the Filipino community in Alberta has quadrupled in size. I'd like to take some credit for that as the former immigration minister when I doubled Filipino immigration to Canada. And I think that was the smartest thing I ever did. Because when you look at, at how this community has brought great professionalism into the healthcare system here and so many other occupations, these are, um, I don't know how we would do without the Albertans of Filipino origin, to be honest with you. I just don't know how we would do it. Well, oh, wow. Well, that, coming from you, Premier, that's, that's very, very appreciated. Um, and of course, I mean, you know, um, as you know already with Filipinos, we're very dedicated, we're very loyal to what we do. And... Um, we like uh, what we call uh, overtime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but anyway, you know, we just like to, we, we we like to do work, um, you know, of course in, in the righteous way and in, in the right way. So uh, I love we that. appreciate, yeah, and definitely we appreciate the uh, the support of the government, of course, and uh, like what you said, you know, um, a, a great a great part of what you've done. In the last few years here, especially in in in, uh, in Canada or in Alberta alone, um, it it has quadrupled the amount of our uh, amount of our uh, yeah, the community. Here, here. So, so how is the community yeah. going to celebrate? Uh, you know, normally there's fiestas this time of year. There's Independence Day celebrations, and uh, and I guess you guys have had to suspend a lot of that and and do it a different way, eh? Yes, definitely, uh, uh, Mr. Premier. We're we're trying to follow uh, all the safety measures, and everyone's aware that uh, this is a serious problem. And for us to be out of this pandemic, we have to help each other and uh, ensure that we follow all the uh, health guidelines. Well, yes, yeah, mostly, and mostly, sir, uh, Premier. Uh, mostly has been done through virtual, um, just like what we're doing now. Okay. So, um, yeah. Um, well, listen, I, I, want, I want people in the community to know that because the community is, is a, one of a real strong faith and one of the virtues of the community is, is a devotion to faith and the values that come from it. You talked about being righteous and that's where that comes from. And I want you to know that um, I, I, we, I was very happy that we were able to lift the um, no um, num numeric restriction on the number of people attending worship services and churches um, as of today, and so um, we have to maintain social distancing in the churches and other places of faith, but uh, I just encourage people, um, we don't want the seniors, the very elderly, going to churches or large grant gatherings because they're vulnerable, but I, I want people of faith to know that they can get out there and pray with their, uh, their, their fellow believers this weekend, this Sunday, and enjoy that freedom which is so important to us. That's so, correct. Premier, if I may uh, ask you this question, uh, with regards to all these other facilities, uh, public facilities, like the pool, uh, gymnasiums, um, how, how are the restrictions in these areas? Uh, can you explain this further as to how yeah, these are? Pretty much, pretty much all of that's been lifted. The, the only restrictions we have in place now are for a large gatherings of people, um, like, you know, anything over 100 outside or... Uh, over 50 indoors, the exception being, um, you know, if people are in a seated situation, like in a restaurant or a church, they should be spaced out. But in terms of gyms, they can use gyms. Uh, however, uh, people need to go online and, and uh, to Alberta Biz Connect, that's B-I-Z Connect, and, and they need to search for the guidelines for their particular sector or industry. If you have a gym, you're going to a gym, you own a gym, Go and look that up on Alberta Biz Connect, and it will indicate what the protocols are. You know, frequent high washing, of, of, uh, you know, uh, sterilization of equipment and not using saunas and things like that. But generally speaking, people can go to gyms. 
Um, and people can go back to restaurants with no limits as long as there's no more than six at a table in their distance. So it's kind of, you know, halfway back to normal, if you will. So, yeah, that's good to know. And uh, for example, for uh, pools, um, how is this going to work out? I know there's social distancing in pool. Is there any uh, findings or there is there any information that we, we can pass on uh, with regards to safety of uh, common pools? Yeah. Uh, well, the pools have opened as of today for recreational swimming. And uh, again, I'm looking for Alberta BizConnect. Um, on my website here, uh, there are specific things. I, I think they don't want too many people crowding in at one time. Um, let me see. So there's some social distancing inside the pool too. Yes, yeah, yes, there is. That sounds about right. Um, hmm. Yeah, I can't quite find it, but it's on Alberta Biz Connect. Is yes, the reason for my question, uh, Mr. Premier, is that uh, I understand you know there's a lot of Filipinos like. Like, obviously, it's warm right now, and they, they like to trip to the pool, and they like to play basketball. As you know, uh, uh, basketball is a uh, close contact sport. So how, how do we go about this? Yeah, well, there is uh, guidelines for all the different sports. Um, and um, I, I should have come with all the answers to every question. No, but... no, no worries. No worries. We'll, we'll, we'll look it up. We just want to make sure I... You know that uh, the community is basketball is permitted, but we ask um, people. Um, so uh, I want to say this is on the pools: aquatic sports, diving, lines, lane swimming, swimming camps and lessons, drop-in swimming, leisure aquatic features like uh, water slides and wave pools are permitted, but whirlpools, hot tubs, dry saunas, and steam saunas uh, will remain closed for the time being. And in terms of uh, things like like um, uh, sports and basketball, there are specific, uh, you know, uh, constraints. Mainly, they don't want people getting doing tournaments or things like that where there's too many people involved or too much travel. So, uh, yeah, you know, if I can. Find that. I guess it's more limited to uh, a, a, a group of crowd, right? Uh, just so, just in case if there's an outbreak, then it's limited, right? Uh, yeah, um, exactly. So, um, hmm, I can't find that. Sorry. No, no worries. That's fine. That's fine. And I mean, you know, a, a lot of a lot of us too. I mean, and uh, hopefully, I, you know, uh, people would use some some sort of a common sense in terms of uh, you know when when That's, they're playing you know or when they're. Right, so I mean, just put um, the social distance thing is a must. That's for sure. So can you just go ahead? It's all about common sense. What we want is people to exercise common sense and personal responsibility. Avoid crowded places if you can. If you're in a crowded place, try to wear a face covering. Wash your hands frequently. Cough into your elbow. All of that kind of stuff. Protect. Most important, protect the seniors. Almost everybody who gets very sick from this disease is over seventy, and they tend to have pre-existing chronic conditions. Um, if you have a senior living with you, um, you know, that's where you have to be careful because if you're going out and, and working, if, the, if you're socializing, you can bring that home uh, to the senior. So it's very important we, we protect them, although they need a quality of life too. And this, is, this concerns me. Some families are sort of locking up their, their seniors. And I know that, that, that your community has a real ethic of family uh, care like you have multi generational yeah. families and you don't put the seniors away in seniors homes and God bless you for that but just be careful for these that 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 if you're out there a lot working like in a healthcare environment where there might be a lot of uh, uh, infection just be careful about bringing that that home that's like those are the most important things it's just about applying common sense that's right yes well sir Niki do you have more questions for um, Mr Premier uh. Mr. Premier, um, as we go through this pandemic and uh, we, we pass this pandemic, uh, I'd just like to ask uh, the value of our frontline workers uh, in this, that, that the pandemic uh, sh showed people, you know, the value of our healthcare system, right? Yeah. And that's why, um, you know, we have, I have to be honest, we're very fortunate that we didn't um, put too much pressure on the health system here. At the peak, we had about 100 people in hospital with COVID, but we had set aside 2,800 hospital beds for COVID. 
So actually, to be honest with you, it was a relatively quiet time in our healthcare system, and that was a good problem to have. Um, not to dismiss, not to diminish for a moment the hard work of those who were involved um, on the front lines, and and really the people who were most importantly at the front lines were healthcare aides and others working in nursing homes and and seniors long-term care facilities. And, uh, and, and a lot of them are quite modestly paid. A lot of them are Filipinas and Filipinos. And, um, and so we provided a, a $2 wage increase for them um, that's flowing through to those healthcare aides in those settings, as well as about a $170 million package of other supports like personal protective equipment and hygiene equipment and so forth for the um, at nursing homes and, and long-term care. So hopefully that's reached those people and it's helping them. And I think this whole uh, sad story has taught us that, you know, us Canadians, the need, we need to do a much, much, much better job of caring for our seniors who are uniquely vulnerable to things like this. Yes, and uh, I must commend you, uh, uh, Premier, that, uh, you know, you, you were prepared. Um, Alberta had a lot of uh, supplies and masks, and you even, you even uh, shared it through some of the provinces. Yeah, and that's the Alberta spirit. And I want, let me say one last thing because I have to go, but I, I want to say that, that unfortunately, because of all of this and the collapse in the oil prices, we are in a very challenging economic situation for uh, some time to come. And I, I know this is going to cause a lot of uh, you know, adversity for people. And I want them to have a sense of hope. We are going to be launching our economic recovery strategy in, a, in about three weeks. And we are going to do, we are, we've already committed uh, 13, 14 billion dollars to the economic response here in Alberta alone. Obviously, the government of Canada has done more, and and we will be doing everything we can within our means to protect families and and businesses to get through this really challenging time, get out stronger at the other end. So I just want people to know that you know we've done well on the health side, but we now have to focus on rebuilding our economy, and all of us are are going to have to be part of that. Including the Philippines. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, everyone, uh, every Albertan plays a, a role to help government uh, get out of, of where we are right now, and it's a tough situation. And uh, there, you know, there were talks that you know there are some additional uh, measures or additional uh, things that are on the table. I'm I'm not sure if you could comment on that. They say uh, possibly there there will be additional tax measures. Is that correct? Well, you know what. We have a $20 billion deficit now. It's gone up from $6 billion. That's how bad the situation is. It's just brutal. And we're yes. going to have to figure that out. We're going to have to have debate as a province because, I, you know, we can't get back to balance uh, by cutting $20 billion on a, on a $55 billion uh, budget. There will have to be sacrifice all around. It has to be done in a, in a humane way that does not suppress economic growth. Um, so I, I spend most of my waking hours now worrying about how to solve that huge problem. Uh, you know, we're probably going to have to run pretty large deficits for quite a while to come uh, because we can't solve this problem overnight. But eventually we have to stop borrowing our way. You know, I think Philippines has seen what happens when you go too far into debt. You, uh, you know, you regret it. Right. And then you, you're right. old bankers. We don't want to go there. So um, we'll see. We'll stay, stay tuned, I guess. And if people have any brilliant ideas for me how to solve this problem, I, I, I would love to hear their ideas. So, really yeah, appreciate that. Uh, uh, yeah, if anyone has brilliant ideas. And Carlos, anything you can add on for the Honorable Premier? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, and by the way, Premier, um, I'm not sure if you knew this, but um, actually the Commission of uh, Filipino Overseas will be uh, joining us right after you here. Um, and I think we're, it, it's safe to say to uh, the commissioner back there um, that uh, Mr. Kenny will be expecting a lot of um, um, immigration papers coming, coming your way. Well, I, 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 do, I gotta be, I have to tell you, I think this year uh, we're going to see immigration go down for obvious reasons because of travel restrictions and the slow economy. And uh, I'll probably be making an announcement about that um, soon. Because with 25% unemployment here, that's the real level, 15% formally, um, I don't want to bring people from other countries to face unemployment. That's not fair to them, right? So we've got to get the that's economy right, right. got to get the economy going. And we've got to get travel back before we can restart receiving newcomers again. So let's do one thing at a time. But certainly next year, I hope that we can uh, 
really restart our immigration programs in a significant way uh, as part of the Alberta Advantage immigration strategy that our government has uh, will be outlining uh, in, a, in, a, in a couple of months. Very good, sir. Very good. And we really appreciate uh, appreciate your time, Premier. Um, hopefully, we can have you on again here. Um, one of Thank you. Days. I would love to come back. Um, just, and hopefully, we can see your face next time, too. We'll do that, too. Thank you, guys. God bless you. <laughs> Happy Thank you very much. Day. Have a great evening, Premier. Salamat. Salamat po. Salamat po. Salamat. Take care, sir. Take care. There you have it, folks. Nako, napakasarap ka usap, Mr. Kenny, Premier of Alberta, Honorable Jason Kenny. Sir Nikki, nako, nakakatuwa naman, ano? Uh, uh, him joining us and uh, giving us, uh, you know, uh, having the privilege of, you know, being being here on our on our on our uh, show. Siyempre, nako. Yes, it's a it's a, it's a very uh, uh, the Premier is in a very tough half situation. Sorry. Yeah. Um, the economy is is really in bad shape, and we're in a pandemic, so it, it's very hard. If 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 you have any ideas, you have any brilliant ideas how we can come out of this mess, I call it, or come out of this recession, I call it, whatever you call it. And uh, yeah, please come forward because uh, we really need in need of brilliant ideas. You know, I am uh, Kaya nga buti na nabanggit ko na kausap natin maya-maya lang ang ating uh, Commissioner of Philippine Overseas. Tama naman kasi yung sinabi niya. Ako naman siyempre, parang gusto ko lang ma-i-mention ma nga ang ating immigrants, di ba? Na siyempre, uh, soon enough, you know, we're gonna need or we're gonna need more of our community to be here, siyempre. Uh, kakailangan natin yan. But, in due time, sabi nga niya na uh, it, it will take some time um, and siyempre as we all know what we're going through not just here in Alberta not, not just here in Canada but also all across the the, the, the world di ba? so ayan ako so on uh, that note uh, Carlos uh, we're going to take a break we're going to take a break yes so director we'll see you in a little bit and uh, mga kababayan we'll be right back we'll be right back Hi guys, it's Shuri Ann Hala Loves Radio Worldwide. Hala Lovesers and Tala Loves viewers from all over the galaxy. Don't forget to tune in to Tala Loves Radio Worldwide 24 hours, 7 days a week only at www.talalovesradio.com And of course, now our very own app is also available for download. So check that out and you can take us wherever you Trance music, because we are the home of the stars, where love resides. Spread the love, love, love. A Sunday of praise with your love DJ, Sherry Ann, from 4 to 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Don't forget to tune in every Mondays, Kikai Girls, from 7 to 8 p.m. Because you feel you, I feel me, I feel you, we feel each other. Because we are the Kikai With Girls. Angel and Sherry Ann. Tune in every Thursdays from 7 to 8 p.m. at Tala Loves Radio, our local radio here in YYC. With your love DJs, Sherry Ann and DJ Solrak. <laughs> every Fridays, Sai Karis TV from 7.30 to 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. With... Our DJ, VJ, Saeed Kareez, a.k.a. DJ Love. Tune in every Fridays from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m. for our breaking news live with Carlos and Tita Nikki. The Fourth Estate. Check out every Saturday from all day. Only at Tala Loves Radio Worldwide at www.talalovesradio.com and our very own app. At Tala Loves Radio. Download it now for a top 40 billboard charts all day long on Saturdays. Please don't forget to check us out also at our very own hub, our very own network at www.talalovesradio.com. That's www.talalovesradio.com. And for the comfort of being able to bring us wherever you go with our 24 hours, seven days a week class trance music. Because here at Tala Loves Radio, we are the home of the stars for Love Yourself. Tala Loves Radio Worldwide. <laughs> Thank you.
And we are back with our news anchors, Solrak and Nikki, here at the Fourth Estate. Oh, okay. welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome, back. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Ayan. Alam mo, nakalimutan natin yung mga ganong mga musta sa ating mga listeners. Ngayon po, dito lang sa aming show sa Fourth Estate. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much for stopping in and joining us here at the Fourth Estate. Uh, siyempre, with, with your host, Solrak and Sir Nikki Gokwan. Sir Nikki. Yes. Uh, maraming salamat uh, sa mga tagapagsubaybay ng Tala Loves Radio. Uh, sa talalovesradio.com and uh, sa Facebook Live ng Tala Loves Radio uh, every Friday po. And alam ko, isa sa mga laging nanonood sa atin eh, ang editor-in-chief po ng Alberta Filipino Journal na si Sir Tito Velasco. Ayun! Yeah, and the special mention dyan kay Sir Lito and also to uh, Marco Luciano uh, Migrante who's uh, watching us tonight. Ayan! Ang dami pala natin mga nanunod. Isa, dalawa. Nako, dalawa na yung viewers natin. <laughs> well, eh, hindi pa kasama yung ano ha? Yung mula, mula apari hanggang hulo. Ayun! Sa <laughs> Ontario hanggang dulo ng ating Ontario mga Alberta. And then sa Pilipinas, <laughs> mula apari hanggang hulo. Na yun. <laughs> anyway, sir, let's let's digest kanina yung ano, um, let's pick parts on yung conversation natin kanina with uh, with um, the Honorable Premier, Premier Jason Kenney. Um, sabi niya nga, ayun, uh, phase two, so Siyempre, ang ating phase one, uh, nag-open na ang ating mga malls, ang ating mga restaurants and things like that. Uh, ito na, di ba? Phase two na. So, part of that, ayan, reopening na ng mga other stores. Now, including mga gymnasiums um, and also mga aquatic facilities and things like that. So, Sir Nicky, di ba? Natanong natin sa ng question kanina. Medyo, medyo ang tawag dito, Uh, ang, ang sagot niya siyempre is okay na okay na nga pero siyempre gamitin lang natin ng konting common sense nga ika nga so what do you, what do you think of that before we go and uh, pick up our uh, second guest for tonight yes to our fellow, fellow Filipinos in Alberta definitely uh, uh, please remember po no, na, uh, to keep uh, social distancing po at uh, kung ayaw niyo ng social distancing po Magmas naman po tayo, ano? Um, gusto niyo bang maka- inuwi yung virus sa bahay ninyo at madadama yung mga kapamilya niyo? Especially kung may mga elderly po tayo. Kasi karamihan po sa atin, alam niyo naman po uh, sa kultura natin, ano? Usually kasama po na ninyo yung mga magulang ninyo sa isang bahay. Eh, ayaw nyo yung mag ng sakit ano? sa mga anak nyo. Isipin nyo na lang po yun. So, sana makinig po tayo sa mga health measures. And uh, hindi pa tayo, ano, hindi pa tayo ligtas. Ano? So, mag-ingat tayo lahat para is- mapadali ito at uh, sana mawala na rin ito. Kaya sino ba may gusto nito, wala na may gusto nito. Diba? Yes, kaya nga kumbaga, kapit-kapit tayo, kanya-kanya tayong tulong. Tulungan natin ng isa't isa kasi kumbaga sa isa't isa, talong-talo na sa akin, mag-uumpis na yan. Sir Nikki, sa inyo rin, sa inyo mag-uumpis na yan. Na para matuloy, matulungan natin ang ating uh, ekonomiya, ika nga, di ba? Para bumangon din. Kasi siyempre, like what you said, we don't want this to go on. Di ba? Yes, and uh, alam nyo, virus, na, ang hirap na, no? na. Have, we are, have we been in in quarantine, right? Uh, in our homes. Exactly. And we, we don't want to go back to that, definitely. Uh, ngayon, the, the restrictions have eased up and we must take care of it. Uh, we must remember the importance of social distancing, the importance of the mask, and our sanitation. I, I know Filipinos, uh, as I've said before, one of the highest, you know, uh, In terms of sanitation, uh, Filipinos understand what sanitation is all about. They even brush their teeth more than three times a day and take a bath more than 
three times a day so what what else can i say diba ayan so in that note sir Nikki we'll end it at that uh, sana po gamitin natin ang ating common sense uh, para naman uh, sa sa kabubuti ng ating ano ang sitwasyon ngayon so with that said mga kababayan we'll be right back dito lang po with the fourth estate fourth estate Going back here at the Fourth Estate, brought to you by Tala Loves Radio Worldwide, with our news anchors Nikki and Solrak, with our special guest, the Commission on Filipino Overseas, Secretary Francisco Acosta. Sir, good morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Secretary. Good morning. Uh, Nikki, you know, uh, my nickname is Nick. I know, I know. Tukayo, sabi ko tukayo. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, Secretary, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to join us today. I know you are very busy and uh, maraming maraming salamat po. Salamat din uh, for having me today. And uh, kumusta sa lahat ng mga kababayan natin dyan sa Calgary. So, Ayun. Secretary, uh, hindi na tayo po magpaligoy-ligoy pa. No? Um, marami po sa ating mga kababayan ang hindi nakakaintindi kung ano po ang differentiation ng CFO. So, what is the C- what is CFO, right? Uh, paki, ano lang po, pakiliwan natin. Po, kasi marami po tayong ahensya, no? meron tayong OWA. Ang, ang madalas po kasi nila naririnig, OWA, okay. yung POEA, yung DFA, uh, yung POLO. Pero ano ano po yung CFO sir? Ito po ano, a little background ano. Nung uh, nung uh, 1989 at uh, 79 si former president Ferdinand Marcos went to Hawaii to visit the Ilocanos there dahil maraming yeah. mga Ilocano migrants doon eh, no? Tapos uh, isang napagkausapan doon Sabi ng mga Ilocano doon, um, alam namin na mayroong nag-aalaga sa mga contract workers natin, yung mga, mga OFW. Pero hindi ata kami sakop dahil hindi kami contract workers. Dahil kami ay nandito sa Hawaii dahil sa permanent residence na kami. Marami sa amin dito 
uh, citizen na no at uh, marami na rin kami mga anak na dual citizens no citizens sa uh, sa Amerika by virtue of uh, the place of birth and uh, natural born citizen because their parents are uh, Filipino citizens so sabi nila pwede ba mag ano naman kayo ng uh, government agency to oversee our interest so nung umuwi si presidente pagbalik niya dito sa Pilipinas he saw to it that uh, an agency a commission was created no with she called the commission on Filipinos Filipinos overseas it was created by virtue of batas pabansa uh, 79 no that was in 1980 kaya nga ngayon 40 years old na kami ito yung 40 years yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. 40 so no, ang, ang, ngayon, ang agency namin is to take care of the permanent migrants, permanent residents abroad, those who have been uh, naturally citizens abroad, yung mga anak nila na pinanganak abroad, no? Tapos meron din tayong mga mga exchange visitors program, yung mga teachers, uh, professionals, mga mga doctors who go to the United States for training. Tapos pero kailan bumalik sila rito? Ito Ito rin, hindi contract workers daw na sasakaw, na sasabupan din ng, uh, ng CFO. Tapos, meron din mga au pairs, ito naman, sa Europe naman pupunta ito yung for cultural exchange. They are not contract workers, but they are also overseas Filipinos. So, they fall within the clientele or jurisdiction of the CFO. On the other hand, yung contract workers, those who are abroad, by virtue of their contract of work, no? ito fall under the Department of Labor and Employment sa POA or the Philippine Overseas Employment Board and the OWA, which is the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration. Uh, of course, meron tayong Department of Foreign Affairs. Ito yung mga, ito sila, sakop nila lahat ng... Uh, ng Filipinos, whether permanent or uh, temporary. At yeah. uh, sila ang in-charge ng uh, multilateral and bilateral uh, agreements for the promotion of political and uh, economic agenda of our country. And also, meron tayo yung uh, assistance to nationals. Ano? They oversee that. It is the, the DFA that oversees that. Yun po ang ano. Yun po. Tapos, Yung OWA, meron tayong OWA. Yung OWA naman, sila ang uh, uh, more or less on the welfare of the workers. no? Sila nagbibigay ng pre-departure para ma-orient yung mga laborers natin. Anong ma-expect na nila sa pupuntahan nila. Tapos yung, uh, yung uh, reintegration nila pagka bumalik sila. No? Uh, OWA yan. At maraming beneficyo binibigay ng OWA sa ating mga returning uh, uh, residents, including their families and scholarship for their children. No? Ang uh, POEA natin, they switch see to it that uh, our uh, laborers are given uh, uh, beneficial and uh, protect, protective contracts na hindi sila maaapi at hindi sila malalamangan sa puputahan nila. Yung po ang more or less ang distinction nitong mga agencies na ito. So, do you have any question or follow up? Ah, uh, hindi pero naiintindihan ko naman. Naiintindihan ko naman tatanungin ko sana ko ano OWA, but I think I know which one it is exactly. Ah, uh, pero ito, ito lang ah, um off topic lang here, Mr. Acosta. Sir Nikki, nakakatuwa naman uh, last week lang pinag-uusapan natin is uh, ang mga barangays, lahat ng barangays uh, in the Philippines, di ba? Ito naman tayo ngayon, kausap natin ang ating head na lang nga, di ba? Head na ito ng, ano, ng ating uh, migrants at mga permanent residents overseas. Nakakatuwa lang, nakakatuwa lang. And, and to know, to know that there is, um, um, an agency. That, that they are, that they exist and that, that we have, um, this kind of an agency nga. Um, believe it or not, ako, I've been in, I've been in, uh, we've been in Canada for over 25 years, sir. 
um, not to not to you know, mention anything bad about it. Pero I've never had an experience nga or or an tao dito in need na na malaman kung meron tayong uh, uh, commission for for foreign uh, Filipinos or as overseas nga. So by the way, which is great now, kasi ngayon syempre, na natin the more that we're here, the more that we're overseas. Marami tayo naka ano eh, marami tayo mga ang tao dito nakakasulubong sa daan, marami tayong nakakausap, marami tayong mga nalalaman, mga bagay-bagay kaya nga na mga hindi lang mga over uh, hindi lang mga of uh, tagit to mga foreign ang tao dito temporary workers, but syempre, marami tayong mga immigrants dito na na ganoon din na nakatira na dito for more than 30 years, for more than 40 years. Um and um yun nga, and, and I don't think Meron tayo na ako, ako nga, for example for me I didn't know that, that that we have this which is very very good but in the same time also I want to I want to say appreciate the, the effort na ginawa ng ating uh, ang ating presidente ang ating presidente Marcos noong araw nga na, na magkaroon ng ganito ong uh, ganitong uh, uh, tao dito established or established na na situation nga para sa atin Marami na tayo ngayon all over the world na nag na nag migrant to different countries because of this ano uh pambansang ano ba yan sir ang batas ng 79 na sinasabi mo kanina apo uh well ang ang migration natin eh talagang uh, continuous ano since uh, even the 1900s no apo, na yeah. nagbumisita yung mga sakadas natin pumunta sa Amerika sa 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 mainland and Hawaii uh, uh, sila nang umpisa hanggang sa dumami nang dumami no of yeah, course yeah, yeah. migration is not our policy hindi naman natin ini-encourage sa mga kababayan natin na mag-migrate pero the realities of uh, of our economy and uh, the uh, opportunities that were uh, given to our given, uh, yeah. fellow men like you you've been given a good uh, opportunity abroad so so uh, that's what drives Filipinos abroad, no? And it is the dream of our president that one day, uh, that one day we'll achieve the level where ang, ang ating kababayan uh, ay mag-migrate, not because of necessity, but because of choice. No? Yeah. Kasi ngayon, karamihan dahil sa kailangan ng hanap buhay, eh, no? Pero pagka... Uh, medyo umunlad tayo, alam naman natin, awan Diyos, at, uh, at uh, bilog naman ang mundo, no? minsan nasa baba ka, minsan nasa taas ka, we may be able to be in, in due time, no? na doon din tayo sa taas, na hindi na kailangan mag-migrate ang ating mga kababayan para magtrabaho. Secretary, uh, matanong ko lang, sir, um, bilang uh, Pangulo ako ng uh, Philippine Media Association of Alberta. Natutuwa ako na you took time to talk to us today because uh, parami po sa ating mga migrants ang hindi nakakalam na um, may programang ganito. And uh, I know there are a lot of migrants ano, na gusto talaga tumulong sa Pilipinas. Ano? And... Uh, Pakishare niyo po sa, sa mga nakikita namin na, na kaalaman namin based on research. Marami na po sa ating mga migrants, uh, not just from Canada, I would say all over the world. No? Uh, marami na pong naitulong pabalik sa ating bayan. Ano, na, na, sino ba naman hindi mahal ng Pilipinas? Eh, lalo na ngayon, 122nd uh, independence po tayo. <laughs> so, happy independence po. Yes, yes, yes. Uh. Sir Nicky, Sir Nicky, um, marami po tayong mga nanunod ngayon sa ating Facebook Live at syempre sa ating, ano, sa ating app nga po. Sir, Sir, uh, Sir uh, uh, Costa, Mr. Costa, naku, ang dami po yata, ano, ang dami niyo po yata followers na, na gustong uh, tanungin kayo ng mga questions. O, open po ba kayo dyan, Sir? Opo, opo, open naman tayo po. At uh, ako <laughs> Very thankful. Alam niyo sa totoo lang, kung hindi lang inabot tayo ng COVID eh, isa sa lugar na gusto ko talagang puntahan ay uh, ay Canada, no? Ay, Kasi no, sir, mar- alam ko marami dito. 
Opo, opo, may enjoy nyo talaga dito dahil hindi lang po sa dami ng ating mga community now, pero napakaganda, napakaganda ng uh, ng Canada. Nako sir, sana makarating kayo dito. Yes, uh, you are to come here, uh, Secretary. Uh, thank you very much. Alam nyo, just for uh, your information, uh, yung uh, meron tayong bagong ambassador dyan, uh, ambassador to Canada, si Atty. Rodolfo Robles. Kaibigan-kaibigan ko po yun. He just took his out of office no, just recently and uh, uh, I think he's getting ready to uh, assume his post as the Philippine ambassador to Canada. Wow, congratulations, oh, yeah. Robles. Uh, uh, ngayon na, uh, at uh, yung ang sana, kung ano, papasyal talaga ako dyan. Once uh, the, uh, itong restrictions ng COVID, eh, medyo uh, malif na. Talagang ano, the, I will say to it that I, the first uh, the first destination I'll go to will be Canada. Ayun. Kasi meron na rin tayong mga invitations dyan na bubisito tayo dyan. So secretary, uh, sa mga sa mga pumapasok na donations uh, from uh, uh, the migrants ano? As I can see uh, malaki na po ang nai-contribute ng mga migrants and a lot of these are going into uh, uh, health health and dental missions and so on and so forth. Uh, saan po majority sa ngayon po sir, anong bansa po ang very active at saan po uh, majority na ng gagaling po? Uh, ang kwan natin ng uh, diaspora natin, no? mga Filipino sa abroad, no? distributed all over 200 countries yan. Ano? Kanina, dinistinguish natin yung, uh, yung permanent migrants at saka yung OFW. Ang, ang uh, stock uh, estimate ng Filipinos overseas, more than 10 million tayo lahat dyan ng no, overseas. Of the 10 million, 41% are o OFWs. No? 48% are the permanent migrants. And the rest, or ele about 11%, these are the undoc undocumented. undocumented. Ngayon, doon sa 48% na permanent migrants, ang pinakamarami dyan, North America, no? which is United States and Canada. Yan ang pinakamarami. Sa out of uh, maybe about five, more than 5 million, no? uh, nandiyan ang mga maybe 70% of permanent migrants nandiyan sa North America. The 30% distributed between uh, uh, Japan, uh, um, Australia, Italy, Spain, no? Korea, yon yun ang, yun ang uh, distribution. Ngayon, so ang remittances, dyan naman ang gagaling kung saan ang ano, dito sa remittances, pinakamarami pa rin galing sa North America kasi nandyan ang concentration ng permanent migrants. Like in 19, uh, 2018, 2018, ang total remittances ng, ng ano, overseas Filipinos is 32.5 21 billion US dollars. US dollars. Yan. Galing dito sa ano. Out of that, pinakamalaki, pinakamalaki pa rin yung galing sa, of course, sa North America. So, Mr. Secretary, uh, That's a great on, deal. <laughs> on, on that note, right, um, yung contribution na yan, napakalaki po sa GDP natin po, no? Sa Pilipinas. Yes. Mga almost 10% natin sa GDP natin. Wow. At uh, yan ay uh, maraming na itutulong dyan, no? not only to the families, to the communities, no? and uh, to the development of the Philippines uh, in, in particular and in general. And it saves us from the uh, adverse effects of inflation. Uh, there were a lot of... Uh, financial crisis that we were able to uh, overcome because of the remittances. Nagkakaroon na tayo ng regional and even international financial crisis. No? Pero nasusurvive natin yan dahil sa, dahil sa mga remittances ng overseas Filipinos. That's why 
they are called the modern modern day heroes and uh, in the words of our president himself they are the lifeblood of our nation kaya to yan uh, to yan very grateful ang uh, ating mga kababayan dito at uh, kami constantly we're trying to reach out to everybody no so that we in somehow we will be able to help them and even when they come back we are welcoming them with the open arms. So, Rock, uh, do you want to add anything or any questions? Yes, or... meron, ano, meron lang pong ano. Uh, meron po lang sa ating mga viewers na nagtatanong, um, Mr. Costa, um, I hope you can answer this for them. Um, ito, sabi po, good morning. Um, are there any updates on the said uh, deliberation on J-1 teacher visa applicant? Uh, ganito po, ano, kasi uh, um, we just had a, a meeting, uh, it's a, a webinar, a, a, a online meeting with, uh, with the members of the uh, EBP the committee, including our uh, counterpart in the United States, ano, uh, the United States representing uh, the State Department and uh, the... Uh, foreign post of the United States. Ang uh, napagkasunduan doon, uh, dahil sa COVID, makakaroon ng moratorium. Ang problema kasi, nagkaroon tayo ng problema recently. Maraming napa, napauwi na EBP participants uh, dahil sa COVID, yung mga sponsors nila, hindi na nila masustain sila sa Amerika. So they were prematurely uh, terminated and uh, sent home prim- prematurely. Ayan, yan ang mga sinalo namin dito no na 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 so sila dito. Sa secondary visa requirement doon kailangan na masuportahan nila ano. But, oh, oh, ngayon eh hindi binitawan ng mga supporters eh. Walang hmm. support no. Eh uh, nagkaroon lang ng konting problema eh pinauwi sila kaagad no. Ngayon, on the, yung mga teachers naman, uh, sa mga teachers, dinidiscuss namin ngayon kung applicable ang moratorium sa kanila. Uh, kasi ngayon, merong, uh, there were those who called our attention na may mga teachers na their, uh, their uh, papers are already being processed for them to go to the United States. No, itong mga EB participants sa ito. So they're crying baka foul, foul sa kanila. Siyempre, disadvantage sa kanila, gumasos sa sila and everything. Tapos yes, mabibigin yeah. sila. No? Oh, oh. Ngayon, we will, we will take that up in our, in our next meeting, which very soon. No? Para sa ganon, hindi naman ma-disadvantage. Yung mga... Oh, mga naka on, in process na in process na tama 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 no sana in po, process secretary na. Ano, uh, Carlos uh, uh, sana po secretary because uh, ang napakahirap sa atin ano when you're trying to process the paper ano so marami na po kung gastos kung marami na po silang gastos tapos hindi po sila matutuloy kawawa naman po yung mga yung mga tao yes we we understand that that's the reason why uh, we will reconsider that as far as those uh, as far as those participants na na na, na, na nasa nasa ano oh, nasa patapos na nakagastos na no mahirap naman na mabitin yon no we will oh. not do that oh ayan ayan po sana to uh, Joseph Magsino ayan sana nasagot na nasagot ni Secretary Acosta at at nalaman mo kung ano yung hinahanap mong sagot para doon sa iyong tanong uh, meron din pong katanungan doon kasama niya si Hillary so I think uh, we answered those questions um, completely. Um, po mga teacher na nununood ngayon na uh, Secretary oh. Acosta. Mga guro ang nanonood sa atin ngayon. We will appreciate if you will uh, if you will write us through our uh, email or uh, even we have a Facebook and we have uh, yeah. we have a website. Oo. 
malaking malaking tulong po yan sir na na yung hakbangin na yon na para masiguro masiguro na matutuloy sila sayang naman eh, kung nasa midstream na and then uh, sir uh, alam nyo alam ko marami kayong trinabaho tungkol sa mga human trafficking sir uh, paano po kami makakatulong at uh, ano pong mga programa na pwede natin i-disseminate dito sa Canada with regards to human trafficking po Yes, uh, uh, kasi uh, yung mga ibang kababayan natin, hindi nila naintindihan yung uh, deleterious effect ng human trafficking. Ano? Uh, human trafficking is a uh, syndicate. Ano? Syndicate, it's a criminal syndicate na nga ito. Ano? And uh, that criminal activity is so, is so uh, uh, prof profitable even uh, parallels yung mga drug syndicate sa mga gambling syndicate na ngayon. Kaya oh. dahil sa nagiging lucrative, maraming napupunta dyan. At uh, ang binibiktima nila, yung mga kababayan natin, na le yung mga lesser educated, uh, uh, na madal madali nilang ma-entice. No? At uh, kung minsan, uh, hindi na kailangan pilitin, kung minsan ay eh, asuhulan lang yung nanay, pati yung nanay, nagko-consent na, oh, itong anak nila, kahit na underage, no? uh, mag-a-arrange sila ng oh, pakakasalan ng, ano, ng itong foreigner na ito. Ganyan. Human trafficking takes uh, many forms. Eh, no? ang, ang, ang problema niyan, ang sumatotal niyan, ang bagsak na ating, ka, ating kababayan, eh parang from the prying pan to the to the fire no uh, lalong uh, sumama ang kanilang kalagayan dahil ang promesa sa kanila o oh, pumunta ang trabaho mo magandang trabaho mo yung pala gagawin silang GRO gagawing uh, prostitute no gagawing human slave no yun ang yun ang ano yun ang ill effect ng human trafficking That's why human you know, trafficking is an international crime. Unfortunately, it is an international malady. Ayun. Yun ang hinahanap kong ano, yun ang hinahanap kong sagot kung ano yung term talaga na hinahanap natin when it comes to um to yun na nga, um, human trafficking na nga. Kasi um I don't know if you know this, um Secretary Acosta, Siyempre, naalala nyo po siguro ang, uh, ang famous na early 2000 na uh, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga mail order bride, ka nga. So, paano po ba yan na nasasak nasasama po ba yan doon sa party ng inyong... Uh... Yes, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were uh, part of the uh, group that... Uh, um, Uh, labid and uh, formulated the anti-mail order bride kasi yun eh, yung mga, mga pre-arranged na marriages, uh, marriage of uh, ano, this is a part of, uh, of uh, human trafficking. No? Ang ano natin dito sa, on the Philippine side, we have the interagency uh, council against human trafficking. No? Itong interagency na to kasama ang uh, Department of Justice, it's headed by Department of Justice, nandiyan ang uh, Department of Interior and Local Governments, nandiyan Department of Education, and Department of Health, nandiyan ang uh, uh, Communication Coordinating Office, uh, nandiyan ang uh, NBI, nandiyan ang, uh, ang, uh, ano, um, ang uh, immigration, no? We meet from time to time to devise ways and means to curb human trafficking. On our part, as the CFO, uh, as a part of the IACAT, we were also assigned to chair the ADVOCOM or the Advocacy Communications Committee. Na, na we operate the hotline 1343. No, this is a 24-7 hotline which provides uh, easy access to the general public to report cases or suspected cases of human trafficking so that we can respond immediately to uh, to prevent or to arrest uh, human trafficking. So, Ayan, Sir Nicky, um, 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 
na Secretary Acosta, baka pwede pa natin pakiulit yan para malino lang po ng konti. Ang, okay. ang hotline po na sinasabi nyo, pakiulit po. 1343. Ito po ang hotline 24-7 to report any incident on uh, uh, respecting human trafficking or suspected cases of human trafficking. At uh, itong hotline na ito, nakakabit din naman sa um, email, website, at saka all social media ano, uh, platform. Para sa ganon, may report kagad sa amin and immediate ang response dyan. May kwan. So we were able to to uh, make apprehensions and even file cases against uh, uh, suspected uh, violators of human trafficking. So, Ayun. Carlos, if I may, uh, yung 134, is uh, local po yun uh, sa Pilipinas po? Ano? Yes, local, pero may may ano, may ano may connect yan internationally. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. So, any, any part of the world, it just goes, goes through. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So you're saying, uh, Secretary Acosta, pag nag-dial po ka ng 1343 ngayon, that goes straight to you? Yes, to it your... goes to our, uh, yes. Yes, 24-7, may uh, nag-operate yan, online. Approved? So, I, I like that. That's yes. very good. Hindi natin alam uh, yan. Uh, yeah, Sir Nicky, hindi natin alam yan. Kaya ito, ang nangyayari po ngayon sa, sa Tala Loves Radio, is napaka-exclusive po nito kasi um, I'm gonna bet you this, um, Secretary Acosta, medyo sasabihin ko na, I think very minimal ang nakakalam po ng, uh, ng, ng ating uh, hotline na yan. So um, marami pong sitwasyon na nangyayari yan all over the world and we know that. Sir Nikki, you know that, Secretary Acosta, and that's why they're, they're, they have this as a, uh, nako, napaka ano, napakaganda, napakaganda na yeah, yung Tala Labs naman, eh, as you know, the 40 state is here to uh, gather the the information, the, the right information. And then, uh, itong mga information na ito, uh, para sa mga kababayan natin, eh, tandaan po natin na kung kayo po ay biktima ng human tra- trafficking or or believe that you are a victim of human trafficking, uh, tubawag po kayo ng tulong, uh, makakaasa kayo ng tulong mula sa CFO, okay? Ganun na, Secretary Acosta. Uh, so, Secretary, on, on that note, uh, ilan na po ang apprehensions natin so far uh, as far as uh, trafficking is concerned? Human trafficking? Uh, I, I don't have the exact numbers now. I don't have the exact numbers now. Pero marami talaga. At saka kaibat nito, ano, we also have this uh, community education program where we go to the countryside, meet with uh, our kababayans doon, no, with the cooperation of the LGUs para precisely to, uh, to educate our, uh, our countrymen the evils of, uh, of uh, this, this uh, human trafficking, legal recruitment, yeah. etc. So sir uh, talking about that ano eh, to attach that to uh, itong balik probinsya ano do you, you think uh, that would that would really ease up or help you know uh, people from thinking of oh my God. kasi minsan no ang iniisip ng mga kababayan po natin the easy way out i call it ano and sabi okay may opportunity no na okay papakasalan ako nito di ba syempre po hindi mo maalis po sa mga kababayan natin na naghahanap sila ng Madaling solusyon ang tawag natin ano. So halik na to no. Ah, sige, sige na, na. Kahit na inaabuso na eh pumapahig pa. Eh hindi nila alam yung long term effects po no. Marami po sa ating mga kababayan makita mo nasa abroad na nagsisisi sila. Ay uh, iba pa sa kasamaan pa lang nagpapakamatay pa eh. So that's that's very you know um because of uh, the hardship you know that they're experiencing. So they're trying to find a way out. But with the uh, government's uh, Balik Provincia program uh, that we discussed uh, with uh, under Secretary Dino, then uh, siguro malaking tulong din po ito sa programa niyo, sir. Uh, anong masasabi niyo po? Malaking, malaki ho, ma, napakalaking tulong. And uh, ang, in, my, uh, limit, in my observation, ano, yung mga nagdaan, nagdaan sa hirap, pumuntang, pumuntang abroad, no? 
Tapos bumalik, pagbalik dito, mas magaling sila, mas masipag sila, mas creative sila, no? Kaya marami yung mga galing sa Amerika o galing sa abroad, no? Galing sa Middle East, etc. na bumabalik dito, nagiging very successful. Kasi mukhang na-appreciate nila, doon hirap na hirap ako, etc. Pwede naman pala ako basta magpakasipag lang ako dito. May mga opportunities dito eh, no? Marami sir, marami talaga actually opportunities sa Pilipinas. Uh, just uh, pointing them to the right direction. And then I think uh, the government is is doing a lot uh, to point it to the right direction. But uh, we, yung mga tao, they have just to open up their minds and take it, take it right? Uh, alam mo, wala naman nagsisimula sa Z, eh, di ba? Lahat nagsisimula sa A, right? So, <laughs> muna tayo sa A, B, C, right? <laughs> Bago tayo pupunta ng Z. So, Tulad ng mag-abroad tayo, ay kailangan magsimula tayo sa A hey, bago tayo mga ano. So give give government a chance, ano, um they're doing their best uh to to you know to help. But uh kailangan din po kung may mga may kailangan ng tulong sir, anong anong uh, dapat nilang gawin? Ano mapapayo nyo? Sa ngayon, sa ngayon, uh we are in a very critical uh, uh, states no dahil sa covid no uh, ang mapapayo ko lang sa ating mga kababayan ngayon eh sumunod lang tayo sa sa mga patakaran ng ating pamala, pamahalaan para makontay ng covid no so that we will not be part of the problem kailangan tayo we should contribute to the solution no ang contribution natin doon, huwag tayong pa-infect. No? We have to follow the protocols. No? Pag lumabas tayo, nakamas tayo, wash hands, etc. Distancing. No? Para sa ganun, makontain natin ang COVID at hindi tayo mapapahirapan ng gusto. Tapos, of course, may konting gusot kung minsan ano, nagtadagsahan yung mga OFWs, pabalik sila rito. May konting gusot, tumulong tayo sa problema hindi na huwag natin magano ng fake news kumisa fake news sila oh awa ito ganyan no okay maliit na problema minamagnify no I, yeah. hindi ta <laughs> hindi ganon no Tama. let us let us cooperate ano to solve the problem let's not be part of the problem no yun ang appeal ko sa aming ating mga kababayan ngayon na magkaisa tayo para tulungan magtulungan tayo para i-solve ito and Maganda naman ang takbo eh. Ang ating gobyerno is pulling all its resources, no? Talagang ano, daming mga benefits binibigay sa ating mga kababayan para sa ganon, maibsan yung sakit at uh, ang parusa na dinadanas natin dito ngayon dahil sa COVID. So, uh, that's true. Alam, alam naman na ano eh, alam naman lahat ng ating mga kapwa Pilipino na basta nagtutulungan tayo eh, sa taas tayo padala, di ba? Talagang, yun lang naman ang kulang sa atin eh. Pero tama kayo dun, sir. Para lang ma-flatten ang curve, dapat talaga magkaisa tayo. Ano Independence Day pa naman ngayon, no? <laughs> anyway, sir, mapabalik po tayo sa, ano, sa inyong, ano, sa inyong, uh, uh, tawag dito, yung inyong schools. Meron po ako nabasa dito eh. Ilan na po ba ang mga schools sa overseas na na-establish na ng CFOs or ng inyong ano? Uh, yung Philippine School overseas, uh, mga 41 all over, no? Pero ito yung mga, kwan eh, um, ang concentration nito na sa Middle East where uh, there are a lot of, uh, of OFWs, no? Kasi itong oh, okay. mga mga sadyante rito, mga, mga children of uh, overseas Filipino workers. Ang purpose nito is uh, to uh, to uh, synchronize and uh, correlate the curriculum. Para sa ganon, pag uwi nung, nung tatay, siyempre dala yung mga bata, hindi sila masyado madidisplace pag uh, really? resume nila ng, ng school dito sa Pilipinas. So, ito sa mandaling salita, hindi sila maiwanan siya, di ba? Opo, opo. Uh, it's like uh, just a... Uh, because iba yung standard no yung standard natin na uh, ang 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 intellect uh, standard natin to be honest with you in the Philippines is really really high right? uh, alam mo uh, totoo yan ha? 
because uh, meron meron kaming program dito sa commission yung uh, yung youth uh, uh, you lead no youth leaders in diaspora where we get uh, youth from uh, other countries and uh, bring them to the Philippines for an immersion of uh, more, a week or so no and after that immersion the the participants mostly students they give their insights of uh, the program you will be surprised they are very very articulate and intelligent brilliant and even their insights minsan hindi mo alam kung saan gagaling and uh, many of them they return their love of country yun ang maganda eh. sabi ko to okay to mga batang ito yan ang future po sir yan ang future Yes, yes. Uh, maganda, napakaganda ng programa na yan, sir. Uh, is it a, an expanded program or this is just in the Middle East right now? No, it's expanded. Actually, marami rin kami sa, ano, sa mainland. Uh, meron kami mga, mga galing sa, sa mainland na uh, who have already participated in this. It's ongoing, no? It's ongoing. Okay. And uh, that's one of the programs that we are promoting because Aside from getting in touch with the Filipinos, we would like to get in touch with the second or third generation. Kasi yes. Kasi nandiyan ang future eh. No? Kasi kung hindi natin oh, nakuha yan, if we will not be able to pick up the second generation, mawawala yan. Exactly. No? They might even lose their identity, di ba? Napaka, napaka, tama po, ng tama po. Sana pagpatuloy yan, eh. pagpatuloy. And then, sir, uh, Marami po kayong ano, uh, awards na pinamimigay. Ang alam ko, uh, can you elaborate on that uh, as, as, a, as, a, as an agency? Uh, you guys are very active at uh, giving awards to, to you know, Philippines uh, abroad, right? Overseas. Opo, uh, meron po tayong gawad, Paolo. Uh, this is an award given by the president himself, no? In Malacanang, no? And uh, two, two Filipinos abroad, overseas Filipinos, uh, who have, who have uh, helped or uh, contributed to the welfare of their kababayans abroad, o kaya who helped the Philippines in our national development. No? Meron tayong mga kababayan na nag-excel sa kanilang profession. No? So they become uh, exemplary. Uh, they become models of uh, their kapwa Pilipino na pwedeng mag-excel ang Pilipino. Binibigyan natin ng award dyan. At hindi lang Pilipino. Yung foreign organization or even foreigner who help the Philippines, no? the national development efforts of the Philippines, here or abroad, binibigyan natin ng award dyan. No? And uh, last year, uh, we were able to give an uh, award to about 21, uh, 17 individuals and uh, seven organizations. They, they, they all came here uh, and we were able to provide free accommodation and transportation plus one. No? Uh, ang ano namin dito is, uh, it is a, a program to reach out to all the Filipinos. No? Kasi ito, it is a process eh. At saka interagency kami. Merong representative ng uh, Malacanang dyan, may representative ng media, uh, Department of Foreign Affairs, uh, POEA, OWA, ito. Kami ang chair. No? And uh, we coordinate with the foreign office. So, ina-advertise namin to, itong awards na ito. Uh, ngayon, dapat sa December ang awarding eh. Pero uh, pinaatras namin so that the period of nomination medyo mahaba-haba ngayon hanggang December. So ang, ang, ang awarding namin will be next year. Ito yung kawal pangulo. Uh, marami rin na uh, maraming uh, sumasali dito and we encourage yung mga mga Filipinos and uh, Filipino organizations because it's only through them that we reach out to the Philippines. No? We encourage our kababayans to help their fellow kababayans because sino pa ang magtutulungan ka kundi tayo. No? Tapos meron tayong isa pa. 
yung uh, uh, migration, advocacy, and uh, media. No? Ito naman, we give awards to, uh, to uh, print, uh, radio, television, journalists, etc., etc., for, for uh, helping disseminate the issues uh, of Filipinos, no? for promoting uh, Filipino interest and advocating for, uh, for Filipino uh, improvement. No? Yan. Uh, we do that also. We have uh, last year, we did make a lot of awards. No? Um, mas marami ang foreign last year and local. And uh, okay. we are giving the same program. Na yung mga foreign uh, winners for transportation abroad to support us. Medyo naputol kayo sa... Secretary, naputol lang po kayo sa nalilang konti. Pero now, just to let you know po, um, kasi dito po kami sa, sa the fourth state, um, um, since you're mentioning ano po, media and uh, so on and so, um, hindi, naman, hindi naman po sa ano siguro, um, we've, started, we've started our, our show, uh, I think just over a month ago, uh, Sir Nikki. Uh, yes. Pero ang Tala, Loves, ang Tala Loves Radio po is now worldwide, so... What we're trying to do, um, kasi po, meron din po kami siyempre mission. Um, ang mission po namin is to bring legitimate information and informative news from our credible sources, like you, for example, from local and around the globe in the service of our communities worldwide. Um, and siyempre po, tumutulong po tayo, katulad nga po sa mga pinag-uusapan na natin kanina, para po may deliver namin sa aming mga listeners at sa aming mga viewers po, ang mga ang mga points and mga key instructions kung ano or papaano tayo uh, makakakuha ng tulong or kung saan tayo makakakuha ng tulong. So, kami po ay nagpapasalamat ng maraming marami dito po sa aming, sa aming show. Uh, Sir Nikki, meron pang, meron, alam ko marami ka pang katanungan kay uh, Secretary Acosta. Ako lang naman, eh, ito nga, eh, nagpapasalamat sa kanyang... Uh, pag uh, pagsama ngayon sa ating secretary uh, the reason why i i ask that uh, tungkol doon sa awards tungkol doon sa ano uh, what i'm trying to drive at sir is uh, definitely gusto malaman ng mga uh, Filipino overseas po kung pa- paano sila makakatulong sa ating sambayanan pa- paano po sila makatulong po uh, I, you can have the floor sir kung paano ano para may disseminate natin yung proper information kung Meron ba silang kailangan tawagan? Ano ba kailangan nilang gawin? Kung meron silang mga uh, programa na na nais uh, gawin uh, dyan sa Pilipinas? Uh, well, uh, I am usually thanking you no? uh, for reaching, us to, uh, reaching out to us. Uh, by doing so, uh, that is a big uh, contribution to our effort to reach out to our uh, kababayan. No? and uh, disseminate our uh, programs and uh, our desire to be of service to them. Uh, so uh, we have our, uh, our platforms, we have our Facebook, we have our email, we have our website na pwedeng, uh, pwedeng kami i-contact all the time. No? Uh, be sure that we will, be, we will respond to you whether uh, Uh, ako, kami na bahalang magbigyan na importansya ng, ng sasabihin niyo sa amin pero we are sure that whatever you, you tell us will be taken into consideration. We are mandated the government of uh, President Duterte you know, ang, ang, ano nito, ang battle cry na administration ito no one should be left behind walang maiwan no kaya wala tayong pinipili wala tayong no? everybody should benefit uh, from the fruits of the sacrifices of everybody ayo so, na pa- so, para maulit Sir Nikki para maulit lang yung nabanggit ni uh, Secretary Acosta medyo 
naglalag lang or medyo napuputol-putol lang. Napuputol-putol lang, lang po ng konti. Ang um, pagkakaintindi ko po, ang sabi ng ating uh, Secretary uh, Acosta is uh, syempre bukas ang kanilang mga, ang mga platforms, lalo, lalo na ang kanilang uh, website, ang kanilang uh, Facebook, um, any messages, anything that you guys want to deliver to the CFO, um, please do so by contacting them. And, and then, uh, wala nga daw po sila pinipili. Na importante sa lahat po daw kayo ay siyempre ma- masasagot sa sa tamang uh, tamang panahon ika nga so yeah on that note Carlos na uh, nice natin na uh, magpasalamat kay uh, secretary uh, Acosta uh, i know he's a very busy man uh, for taking the time to uh, shed light on a lot of matters like human trafficking like itong mga schools na napakahalaga ano uh, sa ating mga overseas uh, worker uh, yung mga children you know ito yung future uh, Carlos Oo tama alam mo alam mo nasasabi na yan eh lalo na na ang ating presidente nga ika nga sinabi niya yan ang dami nagsabi niya na naalala ko rin po si uh, si Tito Ramon Fernandez lahat po yan binanggit nila yan ito ngayon sinasabi ng ating secretary Acosta binabanggit na naman ang ating future belongs to our next generation si ika nga so kailangan talaga i-preserve natin kung anong meron sila o anong meron tayo para sa kanila para sa ikaw iuulad nga ng ating uh, ng ating bansa. So ayan, maraming maraming salamat. Nako, natutuwa ako at ang dami ko na namang natutunan ngayon. At sana po sa lahat ng mga nanonood sa amin ngayon dito sa Tala Loves Radio at uh, um, the fourth estate. Ako, maraming maraming salamat. Ang dami pong nanonood. Uh, Mr. Acosta, Secretary, baka meron po kayong gustong ipahayag or last message po sa ating mga nanonood. Parting words, sir. Uh, mga kababayan, uh, uh, you take very good care. Stay safe. No? And uh, we hope, I really hope, that I'll be going there as soon as uh, COVID uh, is uh, lifted, uh, COVID restrictions lifted. So, I hope to see Look forward to see you. Ayan. Maraming maraming Ayan salamat uh, mula sa Fourth Estate, uh, mula sa yung lingkod na Nicky Gokwan at uh, ang, ang aking poking kasama na si Carlos. At syempre ang ating direktor na si Sherian na nasa behind the, the, nasa behind the scene. Nako, saludo tayo kay Direk, syempre. Saludo, saludo. Pero, pero bago po, bago ko po ipakawala ang ating uh, Secretary Acosta, Kausap po namin kanina ang aming premier na si uh, si Honorable Jason Kenny po ng aming uh, ng aming province na si uh, Jason Kenny nga po. Nabanggit po namin sa kanya na eto nga at uh, i-join po na mag-join po kayo sa aming uh, conversation tonight. Ayun nga daw syempre unfortunately due to the circumstances nga daw po uh, medyo mo hold back lang nga daw ng konti ang ating mga future immigrants Ika nga, Ika. kasi nga dahil dito sa sitwasyon na, na meron tayo ngayon. Pero siyempre, nagdadasal tayo na ma- mapapabilis ito para lumago, lumago lalo ang ating community dito po sa Alberta. Yeah, and on, on, that, on that note also, Carlos, uh, ang, ang mahalagang pin- binanggit ni uh, Premier Kenny, eh, kahalagahan ng Pilipino, uh, ang importansya ng Pilipino sa being ma- a migrant, uh, ako, contributor big big contributor into uh, the uh, province of Alberta Kasi po ano sa uh, Secretary Acosta if you didn't know uh, dito po sa Canada number 3 na po tayo pangatlong ano na po tayo na pinakamaraming ang uh, tawag dito not Ay, just uh, temporary pero immigrants din po tayo na po ang third largest um communities uh, or, or or dito po sa Canada kaya Ako, saludong-saludo tayo dyan kay uh, Secretary Acosta. Meron nga akong uh, kapatid dyan. Uh, I have a sister. Uh, her name is uh, Christina Acosta Kiyay, si uh, Calgary. She is a physician. Oh, she used to live in uh, Calgary. But now, he is in Vancouver. Nasa Vancouver na oh. siya. Pero matagal siya dyan sa Calgary eh. Is uh, uh, she's uh, married to uh, to uh, Meran Kiai. 
Yes. Okay. And uh, meron, na, meron na sila mga anak. Nandiyan sila lahat. May mga board in Canada na ang mga anak nila. I see, sir. Canadian na. Filipino-Canadians na sila, sir. Oh, Filipino-Canadians. Ayan. Ayan. Nako. So, ayan. Sabi ko kanina kay, ano, kay uh, Premier, ang paborito talaga natin is overtime. Exactly. <laughs> ah, overtime na naman tayo. Sekretary Cosa, nako hiningi po namin sa inyo is 30 minutes of your time. Nag 1 hour and 30 minutes po tayo nako. <laughs> na napasarap po. Very much. At ang daming important eh. na inamahan. Saka sabi natin. Ano, Sir Nigi? Ah uh, Napasarap ang kwento at may maraming uh, maraming impormasyon ang uh, naihatid natin sa ating mga viewers at uh, maraming salamat siyempre kay uh, Secretary Acosta. Again, uh, mula sa sa I amin mean, dito sa The Fort Estate and Tala Loves Radio and I uh, have of our directors uh, Sherry Ann and uh, me myself Nikki Gokwan and um Solar Rock or Carlos as you call it. Uh, happy 122nd uh, Philippine Independence and uh, maraming salamat sa time ninyo, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, sports day. Maraming maraming salamat po, Secretary Acosta. At maraming maraming rin pong salamat sa nanonood sa atin ngayon sa likod nyo na si ating Presidente Duterte. We I hope we make you proud and I hope we keep service to you. Sir Acosta, Secretary, kung meron po tayong mga gustong uh, ipadeliver, talong lalo na po sa overseas, bukas po ang pinto ng aming, uh, ang aming talakayan dito po sa the fourth state para po, uh, para po may deliver sa ating mga kababayan. Maraming maraming salamat po. Magandang umaga. Magandang thank gabi. Magandang thank hapon. you. Thank you. Kung nasa man po kayo, dito po sa The Fourth State, magbabalik kami next Friday po. Maraming maraming salamat. Hanggang sa muli. Thank <laughs> you.